Hello, Jeff Zwerink again here with Give and Take, where we explore the latest scientific issues to help equip you to be confident in the truth of Christianity. We have a special guest in studio today, Ken Wolgamuth, and we are going to be addressing a neat topic, an important topic. Did Noah's flood cause the Grand Canyon? Ken, good to have you here today. I'm glad to be here, Jeff. Looking forward to this. Uh, you know, I know you've been in, uh, you're a, a geologist, have been in the area of petroleum geology, worked there for a number of decades. And so I really just uh, am excited about the opportunity to delve into this question because it's one that causes quite a bit of tension within the church. You know, the whole old earth, young earth, how old are things? Yep. And what do we do with the Grand Canyon? So I guess I'll just throw the question to you. How would you respond to someone who makes the claim that, that Noah's flood caused all of the Grand Canyon? Well, Every time that I read the Genesis record, what is coming out in Genesis 6 and 7 and the, and the description there is that it rained for 40 days and mm -hmm. 40 nights and waters kept rising and rising and rising and rising and rising. So the biblical record shows the context of continually rising water mm -hmm. in one fell sequence. Right. However, when we look at the Grand Canyon, we don't see a singular sequence of filling up all these rocks in the Grand Canyon in one big sequence. So there's a dramatic difference in that. So explain what you mean by that. How do we, what's, what's the evidence that there's not this continuous sequence? Yeah. The sediments in the Grand Canyon uh, are the, what geologists call the era of the Paleozoic and the lower four form five formations of the periods of the lower Paleozoic are Cambrian, okay. Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, and Mississippian. Okay. So that's the context of the geologic time scale. Okay, and so presumably the, the Cambrian is older, and then these other ones are progressively younger. And, yeah, that, and that's what we refer to geologic. relative gotcha. time. Cambrian's okay. older, and the Mississippian is the youngest of okay. this particular sequence. Well, when we examine the rocks themselves and the nature of the fossils that are in these, we have the Cambrian, and there's a limestone deposited during the Cambrian. Okay. Then the Ordovician and the Silurian are completely missing. The rocks are missing in terms of the fossils that we know from Europe and from the rest of North America, such as the Appalachians. There is no Ordovician or Silurian. So, so wouldn't that just indicate that maybe there was some sort of catastrophic flood that did different deposits, different areas of the world? Uh, you know, there, so, the, so the geologic column isn't really representative of time. Yeah. Well, when we think about the logic of the whole sequence, that doesn't fit the story in the sense that that limestone that's Cambrian also has evidence of erosion that took place, like there, that was an open landscape for mm -hmm. a period of time. Okay. And there is evidence of channels being cut into that mauve limestone that's mm -hmm. down on the base there, that lowest formation in the sequence. Then channels so, cut in. So, okay, so presumably the Cambrian would have had to have been laid down during the flood and then eroded and carved out during the flood as well. Yeah. For that which, to be the explanation. Yeah. And, and then we completely missed the Ordovician and Sil Silurian uh, uh, fossils. Okay. So it was a time when that area was above land. It was, there was nothing being flooded over there. Okay, so the lack of deposition means that that area was above water, so it couldn't have been... Underground during under, the flood. It couldn't have been okay, under right, the flood. Okay, Could good. not possibly. There's no reason to think that it would be under the flood. Okay. Exactly. Okay, so we've got these two missing major epochs of or eras of Periods. geological yep. history missing. What other sorts of things lead you to say that no, you can't get the Grand Canyon out of a single flood? Yeah. Well, the next formation is Devonian. So the Devonian now is sitting on top of Cambrian, okay. which with time missing. So that's missing time. All right. Then after the Devonian, the next one above that is what's called the Redwall Limestone, which is Mississippian. Okay. The, the youngest of those five that I mentioned. Okay. The Mississippian Limestone, which is the Redwall Limestone by name, is that reddish streak that you see every time you see those pictures of the Grand Canyon. Right. That's a thick... Four, three, four hundred foot thick limestone. Limestones don't form by floods. Limestones are coral reefs. Limestones are formed because calcium and carbonate is taken out of the water by chemical means, by, by organisms making shells, or else by inorganic precipitation. And so it's a shallow marine tropical environment. Okay, so, so that, that's interesting because that, so that 
for or in order to form limestones you have to have sort of, sort of shallow marine environments. Exactly. That's the case. And yeah. so if we're talking about a flood that's covering the whole earth, you're not talking, you're, you're fairly deep to do that and you're not gonna get limestones. Precisely, it's not a limestone that. depositional setting. Then even after the deposition of the red wall limestone, there was also a time period when this was above land surface. And again, channels were cut in the red wall limestone. Okay. There are caves that were formed by uh, Acid rain as it falls down on a limestone tends mm -hmm. to be a cave forming process. Okay. So caves are there also before the next formation that was above that. And again, definitely clearly indicating the passage of time between the red wall limestone and the next formation above it. So it seems like there's two different lines of evidence there. One is that by missing these two eras, uh, that we see throughout the rest, or scattered throughout the rest of the world, that whatever was going on in the Cambrian, there were long periods of time before the other layers were put down on top of it. Exactly. And then mix, and then on top of that, even within the layers, you have evidence of those layers being there, up above the water, being eroded, caves formed, those sorts of things. Exactly. And then water covering and redepositing. Yeah. So you've got at least two separate segments of water. Exactly. There, right. Yep. Um, any other, what other types of evidence would you point to there? Uh, another dramatic piece is that uh, there are no dinosaur fossils in the Grand Canyon, whatever. The dinosaur fossils, the dinosaurs didn't even live, weren't even, God had not even created the dinosaurs yet at this point, because the dinosaurs are Mesozoic, which mm -hmm. is is younger, it's later above, in time. it's okay. later in time. So well, that's, and, and we know that there were dinosaurs up in Utah, so that's not exactly. that far away. Okay. It's not so. far away, but those were in much younger sediments in the logical order from the oldest to the youngest coming up to the north. So this really, I mean, from a, when you get in and analyze it carefully, this really does argue that there's a, an antiquity of the Grand Canyon, and a, it seems to be a great intricacy in the processes God used to form it all. Exactly, no question about it. The, the evidence is abundant and compelling, and that's what drew me into, with a group of colleagues, we wrote a book on the Grand Canyon. It's called Grand Canyon Monument to an Ancient Earth, and we cover fossils, we cover geologic time, we cover sedimentary processes and how those are formed, and we describe the history of the Grand Canyon as modern Christian geologists would recognize it once we do a lot of investigation of the canyon itself. You know, the Grand Canyon really does tend to evoke awe and inspiration as you see it. And this can cause, well, it's caused tension in the Christian church. And often people outside the church can often can ridicule the church because of our views. But what I find amazing is that as we look into the processes and understand how the Grand Canyon formed, as detailed in uh, Ken's book, uh, that we see just an intricate working of God creating this spectacular wonder that draws us to worship him that we can now use to engage others and just ask, who is this creator and how might we worship him?